Good morning and welcome everyone on panel and those who are joining us today throughout Ontario for our final on-ed student chat of the 2018-2019 school year. Uh, today and for the rest of the month of May, we are going to be discussing body image. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for those of you who are joining for the first time, I'm gonna start with a brief overview of on-ed student chat. Uh, this is a student-led Twitter chat that connects K-12 students across Ontario to discuss topics and questions related to character education, social justice, and citizenship. on Ed Student Chat creates opportunities for students to network with others, gain perspective, build relationships with uh, new learning partners in a literacy-rich learning environment, experience social media as a powerful platform for learning, and establish a positive digital footprint. So thank you again for joining us today. I'm now going to turn things over to Darcy, who's going to start with a brief tech talk if you're joining us for the first time, so you can connect with us on Twitter and YouTube throughout the chat this morning. Darcy? Okay, so if you're watching us on YouTube, which is an option, you can just tap on the YouTube icon. You will notice that there is a comment space to your right. This is a great way for you to share your own thoughts and ideas and to add your thinking and get involved in the conversation. You can also watch the video from the website and chat with us and other participants on Twitter. To do, to do this, just follow on Ed student chat to read the ideas, thoughts, questions shared by others. Use the hashtag to add your thinking and get involved in the conversation. If you ask questions, we will bring them up on the panel. Please remember that the audience for this chat is K-12, so your comments and questions should be appropriate for all ages. Great. Great. And now um, we're going to hear from our different panelists who are joining us today. Um, I'm gonna call on each one to introduce themselves. And I'm going to start with Ashley and Aria who are joining us today. So tell us a little bit about yourselves. Okay, hi, I'm Aria. I'm Ashley. We're grade 10 students at South Carleton High School in Ottawa. Amazing, and sorry, what school board then? Ottawa Catholic? Ottawa Carleton. Ottawa Carleton, amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We're very happy to have you. And Darcy, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure, so I'm Darcy. I attend GDCI, which is in the AMDSB school board. I'm in grade eight, and this is coming to the end of my very first year with the chat. That's awesome. And Darcy is one of our student leaders, and she's done an incredible job this year. And she's, she's Thank been you. Actually been posting all of our slow chat questions if you're uh, engaging with us in the slow chat. So thank you, Darcy, for all your contributions this year. And uh, Jen Cassatod. Good morning, everyone. I am excited to be here on the last day of our second year of On Ed Student Chat. It's been a great journey. Darcy, hard to believe you've only been with us a year. It feels like forever. And <laughs> yes. I'm a librarian, uh, currently on leave doing research on the impact of social media on uh, student leadership and digital citizenship and digital literacy, and certainly using um, this amazing program as a uh, recipe for that. So thank you everyone for joining us and I'm excited to hear what you have to say. Wonderful. And I am really, really excited as well to introduce, uh, briefly introduce Matthew from Media Smart. So Matthew, please tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, thank you again for joining us today as our expert on panel. My pleasure. Uh, so my name is Matthew Johnson and I'm the Director of Education for Media Smarts, which is Canada's Centre for Digital and Media Literacy. Uh, for more than 20 years now, we've been doing research and producing resources for parents, teachers uh, and kids about uh, every aspect of digital and media literacy, from advertising to body image to cyberbullying and privacy. Um, and as the Director of Education, I have a hand in pretty much everything we do. <laughs> Amazing. Well, we are so excited to hear from you today. Thank you again for making time. Uh, my name is Lee Castle, and I am your hostess with the mostest today. Uh, I've been a part of the Onet Student Chat team um, since the beginning, and it's been such an incredible journey. I can't believe that we're coming to the end of our second year, uh, and we look forward to continuing on next year with lots of new things to come. So I'm going to turn things back over to Darcy uh, to go over the norms for our tweet and talk today, and then uh, we'll get started with the questions. Darcy. There will be 20 minutes to discuss one or more questions. And once again, just be mindful that this chat is open to K to 12 students. Active participation from classes who are watching. All comments made during the chat should be positive and productive. And everyone is entitled to their own opinion. You may not necessarily agree with something that someone has said, but we ask that when challenging an idea that you respectively disagree with the idea and not the individual person. Great. I'm going to come right back to you. You want to start things off with question number one? Sure. So the first question is 
sorry, this is an alarm going off. But the first question is, what does body image mean to you? Great. So Ashley and Aria, would you like to start? So to us, we feel that um, body image has to do with how you perceive yourself and your body kind of in comparison to how you think you maybe should look or in comparison to other people or like standards in society. We find it's more prominent on Instagram where um, you try and post pictures where you look the best in them and then a lot of us compare ourselves towards those people. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And um, I, Jen, I think I'm going to come over to you. Um, do you have some thoughts around uh, about body image? I know Darcy's listening to the announcements right now. <laughs> well, I, I just I find it so interesting um, when we talk about body image, because it's the it's how we perceive ourselves, but usually it's talking about our physical selves. And I wish we would move away from that. I wish that our body image was our whole body, body, mind, spirit. Um, but I think for the most part, when we're talking about body image, um, it's something that comes up in our health and education classes as part of our curriculum. Um, even in English classes, it's this idea of our physical selves and how we feel about it. Okay, and Darcy, you wanted to add something. Yeah, I'm not really sure what everyone said because I was listening to the announcements, but if I repeat anything, just let me know. But I feel like mainly body image is the way that others, social media, or you choose to view yourself. I don't think it's necessarily always the truth. I don't think it's necessarily always negative or positive. I feel like you can make anything out of it. So. Yeah, that's a really interesting um, perspective about assigning something as being negative or positive. Um, the way that you feel about yourself, um, I think in many ways is, um, I think we impose those feelings um, based on maybe a lot of what we see online. Um, I'm gonna actually ask uh, Matthew to, to jump in here because I'm, I'm sure you have lots to add. Uh, so Matthew? Sure, well, really body image of course is how we imagine uh, mm -hmm. our, our physical selves primarily. Um, but it's important to remember that we are really not experts on how we look uh, objectively. Um, even when we look at ourselves in the mirrors, we're getting a, a flat front image that's reversed. And they've actually done experiments where people have seen, have used mirrors that were reversed so you could see what you actually look like to someone else. And it's very disorienting. So it's important to realize that body image is a mental construction. And depending on who you are, depending on a lot of circumstances in your life, your body image um, may be closer or further from your actual body. Uh, and of course, that means that our body image can have a huge impact on uh, how we live it has impact on our mental health because if we're unhappy with our bodies if we have an unrealistic sense of them uh, and so much of body image of course is cultural because different cultures around the world different times within a culture have valued different body shapes different aspects of bodies even different shapes of, of faces um, and today of course media of all kinds whether we're talking about mass media or social media have a huge impact on how we perceive ourselves and the standards that we hold ourselves to. Yes, uh, th yes, uh, there, I, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> you comment, you, you made so many interesting points, especially how body image and our um, understanding of, or I guess how we perceive beauty, how that's evolved over time and how it continues to evolve. Um, I'm even thinking today about some of the Dove campaigns that are out there that are really challenging people to rethink beauty and, and what a beautiful body looks like and what that means. Um, but absolutely, and, I, and I'm excited to, to dive further into that conversation um, when we start to look at the role that media plays in helping to shape that perception of, of body image. I know, Jen, you have some comments from Twitter. I do, um, some really awesome comments. Uh Rashika, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong. Um, she is talking about body image as a way we see ourselves when we look in the mirror, but it's heavily influenced in society by society's idea of a perfect body, which is I think what Matthew was getting at. In Miss Daniel's class, GB wants to add that it doesn't matter how you look. 
um, but it's really how you feel about your, your look, which is that idea of the social construction. And lots of other really great uh, comments, um, the way we evaluate ourselves, that notion of evaluation, um, and, and how much it impacts you. That's from Taylor as well as Isaac. Um, so that's it for now, and, and uh, I'll be responding to them there as well. Great, thanks, Jennifer. Um, Ashley and Aria, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, well, one other thing about body image is just kind of how um, Darcy was talking about, like the positive and the negative. And when you think of it, just like the main thing is that we wish that it would be more positive, or that it'd be something that people can um, teach themselves to like look at in a positive manner and make themselves feel good about who they are instead of always worrying and like worrying about what other people are thinking of them. So we were just like hoping that, although we know there's a lot of negativity about the subject, that like people should know that there can be positivity as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Darcy, did you want to add anything else? Um, I feel like most of the things have been covered. Um, okay. I feel well, good. Sure, no problem. Well, so why don't we move on to our, we have, okay. uh, we have a question specifically for Matthew on panel today. Um, so yeah. Darcy, why don't we move on to that one? And then once Matthew's had a chance to answer, we'll come back to you ladies and, and um, get your thoughts. Sure. So our expert question, our second question is, how does social media portray the ideal body image and how does this affect how we view ourselves? Well, there isn't really a single way um, that social media portrays the ideal body um, because, of course, of course, social media is used by many different people um, around the world. And so depending on where you are in the world and to a certain extent, depending on who you're connected to on social media, you will see different ideals. But that being said, um, in North America, in Canada, in the United States, there really has um, be, been what you might call an Instagram aesthetic that's appeared uh, and that has really presented as as rigid a, a, a view of what uh, is an acceptable body image uh, or body shape um, as you know as ads or TV ever did um, and there are a couple of reasons for this one of them of course is that um, on social media, ordinary people, you know, like you and me, are participating in the same medium as celebrities. Um, if you're on Instagram, you're actually on the same. It's sort of like being on TV uh, and, you know, there's you, ordinary you, and then next is some celebrity who has millions of dollars to pay for personal trainers and has to be, you know, be perfectly fit for to appear in movies or whatever. On Instagram or similar social networks, you're appearing side by side with them. And so the pressure to, to look like them, the pressure to compare yourself is even more powerful than, for instance, when you're flipping through a magazine and you see a model there. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing, of course, is that social media allows us to uh, present to other people a, the highlights of our lives. Um, and that's in a couple of different ways. So one of them is that most of us We'll only put something on social media if we think it reflects well on us or if it was a positive experience. Um, and similarly with photos, we know from research that we've done with young people, people spend ages trying to get a photo where they look good, where they fit that, that, that body image that they want to fit, um, and then sometimes alter the photo because, of course, it's very easy with filters, with Photoshop. Um, but when we're participating, even though we're doing all those things ourselves, we know what we really look like, or at least we have an idea in our heads what we really look like. And we know about all the parts of our lives that aren't so perfect. And we know about all the photos of ourselves that didn't put, turn out so perfectly. But we're seeing only the highlights of other people's lives. And so that seems to have a pretty powerful impact on body image as well. That it's not just the celebrities, not just the movie stars and singers that we're comparing ourselves to. It's these perfect images of our own friends and classmates. And so that too, because we see the reality of ourselves or our perception of it, and we see this ideal version of our friends and classmates, um, has a powerful impact in making us feel inadequate. Mm. 
you made so many interesting points. Um, I'm thinking about this, the whole idea of our digital persona and the person that, that we create or the, that image or perception of ourselves that we present online, Matthew, and how, um, and I, it's interesting, I'd never thought, um, although it makes perfect sense that we are occupying and, and participating in the same space as people who do have those millions of dollars and can spend all of this time on their physical appearance, but that also begs the question, you know, why, <laughs> you know, what value does that add um, to spend all of that time and invest in, in, in our, uh, the way that we physically appear to others. Um, but that whole idea as well of competing, maybe not competing isn't the right word, but participating in those environments, showing the best version of ourselves and now looking to our friends. So it's not just comparing those famous people that we would see on TV or in magazines now. We're now also looking at our friends and our colleagues and our peers in those environments who are presenting um, a certain reality uh, or a perspective, I guess. Um, anyway, I want to turn things over. Um, Darcy, did you want to? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I feel I definitely agree with everything that Matthew was saying. I feel like it's extra hard to especially, you know, it's very, it can be very overwhelming for some people, um, especially when they don't believe that they fit that mold. But I, when I, I think I heard you say something about like, it, like body image depends on like who like you connect to on social media and where you're from and things like that. And I just wanted to point out, like, I know a lot of body image and social media affects us negatively but there are pockets of the internet that you can connect yourself that you can connect yourself to that are positive and that will have a positive influence on your life and i feel like for some people it's about not looking at the negative and deciding to um spend your time on the internet in the positive pockets yeah so i have to say that Absolutely. Um, I'd love to come back to you for, for some examples of those positive spaces, Darcy. So I'm going to give you some thinking time. Jen, I know you had something you wanted to share, so I'm going to come to you. And then Ari and Ashley, we'll head over to you next. I guess, um, Matthew, as you were talking, so when I was quite young, I was bullied and I was cross-eyed. And I remember my parents taking a hundred photos so that we would get that one photo where my eyes didn't look crossed. Um, so I think that's always been there, right? This idea of putting your best foot forward or your pet best life forward. I wonder if the, the negative impact comes from, as you said, like the fact that we have consistent access to it because we know that, you know, these issues have come along, um, have been prevalent for, for a long, long time, but now we have easier access. I mean, I look at Snapchat and I can look 20 years younger when I'm using a Snapchat mm -hmm. filter, right? Why wouldn't I? And you can, then we're sort of con uh, comparing our filtered selves to our real selves. And, and that's a real concern. There are so many amazing comments um, as well on Twitter that I can't even keep up. Um, <laughs> honestly, you all need to just go to the chat. Um, I like this comment. Uh, uh, in uh, influencers on Instagram are always promoting things to lose weight or get an ideal body image um, and that those posts are then promoted and then people right it, it we have to understand that media is a business um, Sarah talks about uh, generally trim and fit um, for men very muscular women curvy and thin which causes us to take a look at it and compare ourselves more um, lots of lots of uh, I guess uh, agreement with what you had to say Matthew um, so thank you for uh, for all the chats in here respond to one another um, they're awesome Amazing. And if you are just joining us now, you can find us on Twitter. Just follow the hashtag on Ed Student Chat, or you can visit um, our website and the live um, feed of our conversation is happening there right now. I want to move over to Ashley and Aria. I just find it funny that most of our followers are our friends and people we see often, but we still alter our pictures, even though they know exactly what we look like. Yeah. yeah even That's a really separated. interesting point. Sorry, go ahead. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of really good points were made, so we don't have too much to add, but um, one other thing about celebrities is that I feel like when we're looking at their photos, we forget that, like, in that case, their body is more of a product, and it's not just them, so I feel like we forget that they have the whole team of people working on their body, and it's almost like a separate thing, like, they're selling their image, so we forget that we're just people, and since we don't have that team working on our body, like, as a product, then you shouldn't really compare yourself, even though it's really hard not to. Yeah. That's a really interesting point. This whole concept of your body as a as a product. Um, I 
I never thought about framing it that way. Um, but I, you're, I think you're absolutely right. Matthew, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, uh, one of the things that uh, people do have to remember is that uh, social networks are um, almost unique in the history of media because the users provide the content. Um, with TV or magazines, of course, we, you buy those, you go to those so that someone else will entertain you. Um, but on social media, it's mostly you that's providing content to entertain your peers or connections. Really, the only similar thing in history is the telephone. Of course, on the telephone, you can't see other people. Um, and you know, there's limits to, you, basically, you can have a conversation on the telephone, but that's it. Social media is a lot more like traditional media, like other, like TV and things like that, in terms of all the different things we can do with it. And so um, there is a, a sense, just like uh, celebrities have, there's a sense that you are a product. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, of course, you are the product as well for these platforms because it's your participation that creates content, um, and it's also your your attention to the ads on those platforms and the data you get from that lets them target those ads that makes them uh, make money lets them make money. But it is important to realize that those are tuned. It, you do need to know that when you're on social networks, you're not just getting a pure feed of what everybody else is posting. All of the social networks, they have algorithms, they have computer programs that guess what is going to engage you the most, that is guessing what's going to make you spend the most time on this platform, what's going to make you come back to it. And whatever it thinks is going to do that is going to feed you those things uh, first. And it's going to feed you things that it thinks are going to be less interesting to you later. So to a certain extent, you are a product when you're online because consciously or unconsciously, you're always selecting things that you think are going to be seen and appreciated by other people. So first of all, you're selecting things probably unconsciously that you think the algorithm is going to surface. It's going to put up near the top, even if you're not aware that the algorithm is doing that. You have con unconsciously noticed some things get a wider reach than others. And of course, we do know what things get liked, what things get shared, and so on, and also what things get negative feedback. And certainly in the research we did um, with young people a couple of years ago about photo sharing, a lot of them told us actually that they were really reluctant to post photos of their faces or post photos uh, with their bodies in them because there was too much of a risk of negative feedback that people were going to criticize them if they did that. And at the same time, there is a pressure to post things that would get positive feedback. One of the kids actually told us the one thing that you could always get uh, good results on is a sunset. Hmm. And he, he said that sometimes when there's a really nice sunset, everyone will run outside and take a picture of it because it's the one thing you can always count on getting likes and no one's going to criticize a sunset. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, Dar Darcy, I know that you have something you want to share and then Matthew, you want to comment on what you said. Darcy, go ahead. Yeah, so just about positive pockets. Um, there's lots of positive influencers and models who on Instagram are openly proud of their bodies and talk about them. There's also websites and blogs who talk about body image openly and honestly that are great to read and spend your time on social media looking at. Um, an example of a positive pocket is currently this chat is a positive pocket mm -hmm. because it's a place where you can learn about and challenge your thoughts and it hopefully somewhere is having positive impacts on people right now. So my heart is <laughs> this is one of those positive pockets. And and connecting back to um to what Matthew was saying, um, you know. It, under, I want to I want to comment on on understanding our purpose for being involved in these spaces and um, that need or that that um, that desire to have an audience and to have that audience appreciate you and celebrate you and how that um, feeds sort of this this whole idea of of body image and and how we look and how we present ourselves and I really like the example of you know the the positive feedback I get on a sunset because it's it's not there aren't comments that reflect me uh, per se as an individual where when we start to share things about ourselves, we're, we're internalizing a lot of the feedback that comes in positive or negative. Um, 
And that I think in, in many cases can be, it can be very uplifting, but there are also times that it can be very damaging. I know Jen has some comments um, from YouTube. Oh, sorry. I just saw your comment in the chat. No, you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just going to say it was a really, really good question asking about that positive uh, mm -hmm. comment. And, and I know that um, I think that we have to be as someone who tries to be really positive all the time. I think understanding the way media works, um, what Matthew said about understanding algorithms, understanding about the fact that your feed is going to be populated um, with things that you know instagram or snapchat thinks that you like or or facebook understanding that and then just trying to be that positive light for others um I, you know to to be that for each other um to keep ourselves grounded and real because i think i can't remember if it was ashley or aria who said that for the most part the people we follow on social media are our friends and so you know it, we need to be that light for each other and that reminder for one another that we can you know that, that who we are is more than just the way we look on Instagram or Snapchat. Yeah, really and well, well, Yeah, really well said, Jen. Uh, Darcy, let's move on to question number three. Sure, the third question is, what do you love most about the way you look? All right, Ashley and Arya, do you wanna kick things off? Sure. We struggled with this question. <laughs> I, I think as we were thinking about what we, what our favorite part, what we loved about our body. It was also separating it and displaying what we didn't like. Mm. So it was bringing the negativity back into it. Yeah. So we were kind of talking to our teacher about it this morning, actually, and thinking about why we always like worry so much about, you know, like the body image part of what we like about our body. And when we think of that, we usually think of a part. It's like, oh, what part of your body do you like the most? And we were thinking just like, when did it become that way? Because originally bodies, they have a function. And I was yeah. thinking, like, if I had to choose a favorite body part, it would be my hands because I play piano. So that's really important to me. It allows me to do something that I love to do. And we're just kind of wondering, like, you know, like, why that isn't how it is. Like, people love their body for um, the ability it gives them to do activities instead of, you know, just the image. Or you, you pick a part. And I really like my smile because not only, like, it's not because I love the way my smile looks, it's that. When people see my smile, other people, like it's contagious. So it's more about what I can do with that part, but not why I like it more than anything else. Wow. I am. Um... I'm actually speechless at the, 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 just the depth that you brought to this question, which I think on a very surface level, for me, I was thinking about, well, what, what do I like best about me? And, you know, I was actually thinking about what Jen said about, you know, being teased as she was little. Um, I didn't used to always have two eyebrows. Um, I had very much one eyebrow as a young child. And um, one of the features I get commented on the most are my eyebrows <laughs> today. But it was one of those things that I was bullied and teased and picked on as a kid. And it was something that I really wanted to fix because I didn't want to be treated that way. And it it brought back um, just some of those memories <laughs> when Jen was sharing that personal story. But then for the two of you to come on and talk about um, how this question really, again, focuses on the aesthetic, right? How we look, how people perceive a certain part and whether they find it attractive or unattractive, as opposed to what purpose or what function does um, you know one of my body parts serve that um, makes me feel good about myself or makes other people happy. Um, I like my smile too, because I think that, um, you know, I've been, I've been told that my smile is infectious, much like you, Ashley. And Aria, I love that you chose to talk about your hands because you play piano and the joy that that brings to you and to the people around you that enjoy your music is, is a very beautiful way to, to share, um, an answer to that question. Darcy, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, sure. So kind of the same thing. I don't really have a part of my body that I would like to share, but I do want to speak about, um, well, first I would like to talk about how for a lot of people, this question might be awkward or they might want to avoid answering it. But I feel like this is weird because everyone's always open to talking about what they hate and what they don't like about it, like ourselves. But I think that this is good because we need to have more conversations like this. But um, 
I feel like I what I love about myself is that I feel confident and I'm very lucky to have had role models in my life that have helped shape me into the confident person that I am. I feel that when I walk, people can see me and feel that confidence, like not in a cocky way, but in like a happy and easy to approach way. And I feel like that makes me like happy in the bubbly kind of person that I am. I also like that no one else in the world looks like me and I know I'm different and I stand out in my own unique way and I know a lot of people that's what they don't like about themselves because they want to look like everyone else and look what who they see but I think it's cool to think that in a crowd you are different and you stand out and you're just your unique self so that's what I like about myself very well said. very well said. And do you have anything on Twitter or on YouTube that you want to bring in and then I'm going to turn things over to Matthew I am doing a terrible job of keeping up with everything that's on Twitter, I'm not gonna lie. Um, there are just some amazing things. Um, Zach says that a lot of social media sites, um, that there isn't necessarily a, a transparency with how people are, that even if you, someone posts something um, and you you don't wanna actively comment against it, I'm asking for further cl clarification, but he's saying that there's no v visible negative opinion against the post because that sort of disappears. Um, Olivia saying it's hard to find something you like about yourself because you're looking in the mirror and you're finding flaws. Um, and that even though some people might see the beautiful uh, parts of you, you ignore those flaws. Um, and, and I think that's really interesting. Um, there are lots of people sharing uh, what they like. Um, Mr. Scarlato's students painted a Canva for the campaign, which culminated in a series. So if you look at what Noah Daniel is posting, I'm gonna um, retweet it. Um, it has uh, just beautiful images of, um, you know, uh, positive things for body image. Um, and then in YouTube, I think we are good. So okay, amazing. Thank you for bringing in those comments. I, it's it's exciting that that Twitter is so busy that you're not able to keep up. That's that's a good thing, right? <laughs> uh, Matthew, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Well, I can't really top uh, some of the answers that have come up, but I, I do want to just raise a couple of points. And one of those is that everything I'm hearing and everything I'm seeing on Twitter is is just evidence of how important it is to be media literate, um, to be able to uh, not just remind ourselves, but also to to critically analyze the fact that what we see on social media is as much uh, a construction, is as, it is as artificial as what you see on a movie screen or in a magazine. But I also want to say that there's something really special about digital media and social media in particular, and that is that we make it. And that means that we have a choice about what content there is on there. You know, when with TV or something like that, you could choose what to watch, but you don't choose what's on there. But we decide together what's on social media. And so we can decide together to be honest, and we can also choose to be kind. Because, of course, people aren't going to be honest if other people aren't kind about those honest photos. And so we have a choice when people are being honest, when people are putting up a photo that looks like them. It's our choice to be the first commenter and be kind. Because, you know, if that first comment is kind, it's a lot less likely that there's going to be negative stuff further down. The first comment so often sets the tone. So that's the choice that we all have as media makers today and not just media consumers. Yeah, that, that's a really interesting point, Matthew. I wanted to ask, is there is there a movement um, on social media, a hashtag that, that addresses exactly what you just spoke about there? Or is that something that we need to start it on at Student Chat? I think we should start it right here. <laughs> I think so too. So we need to think of that hashtag um, right now while we're uh, while we're still working through this question. But that is a that's a great point, and I hadn't really thought about that first comment and how that first comment sets the tone. Matthew, thank you for for sharing that. Um, anyone want to add anything else on this question before we move on to our final question for today? All right, Darcy. Let's uh, question number four, please. Okay. So our final question for the day is: Who is your body image hero, and why? All right, so I'm gonna head over to Ashley and Aria if you wanna start things off. 
So our body image, uh, sorry, body image hero is uh, Jamila Jamil, who's a celebrity, and she's actually an actress on the TV show The Good Place. If you watch it, and um, <laughs> <laughs> she's like our hero because she started this movement or campaign called I Weigh, which you can follow on Twitter and Instagram. And she basically like advocates for you know all the different shapes and sizes and different body types and just showing the positivity that everyone can you know have in themselves and instead of using numbers she uses she says i weigh happiness confidence instead of using a number that defines that um people take as defining what and who she is yeah so it actually became this trend where you post a picture of yourself and say i weigh and then underneath you basically put just all the things you love about yourself and a lot of different celebrities have also joined the movement and posted their own photos like sam smith and i would just say that you know that page is like a positivity pocket because when you see it, it just makes you feel happy because it's so positive and she's just trying to represent like everything that doesn't get represented and i think it's a really good role model um also just for celebrities to be giving back to the community and just sharing that love Mm -hmm. That f fabulous example. Very, very powerful. Thank you for that. Uh, Darcy, how about you? Sure. So um, I would say probably Winnie Harlow, because she was one of the very first confident models I saw who was beautiful in their own unique way and was still confident. And she didn't fit the ideal beauty standard, but it was eye-opening for me to not only see the confidence she had along with strength seeing that for people who didn't believe in her or made fun of her but just to see that she truly believed that she was beautiful and she had a different kind of beauty and it wasn't the ideal beauty but it was so beautiful i don't know if that makes sense but i also have a side note so last night i was thinking about this and I knew I wanted to talk about Winnie, but I was also thinking about other people I might be able to um, mention. And I looked up body image heroes and the search came up with models and articles and um, they had messages written on or in them like six pack hero or one look like that. And I feel like it's just pure irony almost that even when we purposely try to view positive media, the majority is still going to be negative and people assume that a body image hero has to be someone that you want to look like and not someone that you want to feel like or necessarily like look up to. I just thought that was very interesting. So that is very thank you, Dave. Do you have anything on Twitter or uh, YouTube? I do. Um, in Miss Daniel's class, LG said, and I really like this, that anybody can be a body image here. The first step to becoming one is to be confident in your body. Um, and as long as you love yourself, then, then you can be a hero for someone else. And um, speaks to Emma Watson as one of the heroes. And then there was another one. Um, Ella is talking about her body image hero being her mom. Um, because she always uh, still tells her that her body is something to be proud of and not to worry about. Um, Billie Eilish, as someone that Taylor is sharing, um, because she wears baggy clothes and people can't see what's underneath, um, so because it doesn't matter. Um, lots of really uh, great other comments as well about uh, body heroes, um, so check them out on the chat. Awesome, thanks, Jen. And Matthew? What would you like to add? Do you have a body image hero, Matthew? I would say, you know, all the people on this chat, all the people <laughs> who, are, who are participating here, all the people on Twitter who are uh, making a difference. Because like I say, the great thing about digital media is that uh, we're a part of it. And thinking about it, talking about it, sharing honest, flawed photos of ourselves, uh, if we want to, we can have a much more honest, a much more open and accepting media image of people's bodies. It doesn't have to be the Hollywood look. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, the, the look you see in magazines. That's our choice. And so all of the people who are helping to make uh, a, broad, a, a more honest world um, and a world where people feel better about themselves, those are my heroes. Right. Thank you so much. Um, does anyone want to add anything else before we wrap things up today? 
All right. Well, I did throw out the the question or the idea that we need to uh, come up with a hashtag here, I think, in celebration of today's chat that on Ed Student Chat will adopt and share out. Um, I've been jotting a couple down. I've got hashtag be real, hashtag your truth, hashtag positive pocket, love it, Darcy, or hashtag this is me. So for those of you that are tweeting away right now, share a hashtag that you think would be um, uh, a great way to continue celebrating and, and encouraging this conversation about positive body image and uh, loving ourselves for who we are and the way that we look. So I want to thank everyone again for joining um, our on ed, suite, uh, on ed student chat um, panelists today. Thank you to those who joined us, um, who are tweeting away and who are commenting on YouTube. We really, really appreciate your support and we hope that you'll continue um, with the chat the rest of the month. Darcy will be posting our Twitter questions um, over the next few weeks and we encourage classes to join in uh, when it's convenient for you. Um, comment on what others have said, share your own ideas, like, retweet, let's celebrate and, and create that positive pocket um, for On Ed Student Chat. Um, you can find us on our website at onedstudentchat.com where the recording of our conversation today will be posted and of course you can find us um, on Twitter at on ed student chat please follow the hashtag on ed student chat to engage in the conversation and this is our last chat of the year so we are um, also saying farewell until uh, october 2019 so please watch for details coming out about our first chat of the 2019 2020 school year which will be posted on our website in august thank you again for joining us everyone and we will see you online take care bye-bye thank you everyone